Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the fourth day of the live streaming of the composition of the Gratitude Concert. My name is Martin Burial, and today I'm just going to jump straight into it. Here's a story that I got from a woman, and the first thing she writes is, My greatest fear used to be dying alone, but now I have an even greater fear that my ME, that's myalgic encephalomyelitis, illness of immune and hormone and nervous system, that my, I have an even greater fear that my ME will turn permanent and wor will be permanently worsened so much that I will need home care and that is because that those home nurses, they, they wouldn't be able or they wouldn't know this illness. They wouldn't understand what I need and they wouldn't understand what not to do to ME patients. For that which is normal can rarely be used in this case and it will do more harm than good. And it will make me so sick that I will want to take my own life and I have no relatives who can be there with me no one to get any help from, and especially not the system. I am sailing in my own pond. I can scream as loud as I want, but no one will be able to hear me and help me or understand me and this illness. I've had to face this fear because it was draining my energy and that can make you even more sick. I still have that fear, but by facing it, I can attempt to make it not take up as much space or influence, influence me too much. So this is a woman with ME and that will be the story for today. Um, brief introduction, this is day four and, and we've been around a few things by now, three days with, with uh, you know, some, some themes that I think are really interesting. And I will maybe today and, and tomorrow too do a quick recap, but I want to make sure that you're on board with the main theme before we go ahead. And, and so that's a very simple, very pastoral theme that goes. to that and a sense of gratitude and and we're just using that as an anchor and we will see if it can hold water throughout the composition and we kept on building on that theme and we were introduced to the ox that plows its field collaborating with two birds and they are making this wheel of the composition turn around and and he comes in in an odd meter meaning five over four wandering of the ox and the wheel that goes around and and we came into a captain a woman suffering from Meniere's disease where you are dizzy all the time and you don't have a balance and and she was you know she influenced us to, to do a variation of the main theme that became a little bit more like sailing <laughs> Five years 
until she finally herself discovered what was wrong with her. And she had a dialogue in a dark room in our imagination with the doctor who neglected her for five years. And, and he had this theme, the authority that he tried to retain, that, that was that we put in these folds here. And later, when he got a little bit, that when he realized that his authority was gone, he, he comes up here and we realize that doctors and patients and soldiers are children too, and they come up here, and this is all a game of pretend, this weird game that we play coming in, people as patients coming in front of doctors. And now some of them sometimes, if they suffer from something that isn't immediately recognizable, are reduced to numbers. And that is, in fact, reality. And so there was something about this, uh, this doctor and him trying to hold on to a system. And we got into this pattern that sounded like this. took those rules and we, we thought, okay, they're going to play pretend. And sorry if I'm going out on a, on a limp here, maybe I'll find a better system to, to do the recaps in, you know, three days from now. But let's just go through them real quick, you know. The, that theme, you know, we wanted to, to have the rule come in as a, the rules come in and, and almost be a character and, and pretend to be real, pretend to be universal, which is what happens, right, when people put rules in front of people. You pretend the rules are universal. And of course they're not. They just pretend. Like cowboys and robbers, right? And, and no, the ox from day one is real. And that's a real human being working every day, a real experience, trying to cure his wife and his daughter from a horrible illness. That's reality, not rules. And so the rules pretend, and they pretend to be the ox. And the ox had this movement, right? And so that was a five over four. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. To, to sort of keep a circular momentum going. And now let's take the rule theme. And now instead of doing five over four, it pretends to be the ox, but it wants to triumph the ox. And so we add another note on top of it that sort of triumphs it. So it'll be like. Just going to sort of bite its own tail, but sort of uh, always pushing the theme. And so on. And, you know, then we got into. You know, this weird snake in paradise that this low B that's come in and be the disruptor of things. And then this woman who lost five years of her life comes in and says, those five years were mine. realize now maybe I should start coming up with a system to share these themes. I'm terribly short on time these days because I'm learning to run the so me thing while writing this concert and, and um, but I promise you I'll, I'll try to come up with with an idea of how I can share the recap of the themes and, and keep everyone involved in the themes. Okay so Let's move on with it. We have these themes, and today we have this story from this woman who is suffering from ME. And here's the thing, you know, it wasn't just that when she was in her mid midlife, she suddenly got ME 
I mean, she did, but here's the thing. She was, uh, she writes to me that um, she was uh, raised by a narcissistic mother and, um, and suffered horrible uh, mental, psychological abuse in her childhood. And as a result of that, as we know, these things happened. She went out and she fa found a, um, a partner who was um, exercising at least psychological violence. I don't know if it was physical as well, but for 50 years, she was in, uh, uh, as she calls it, a prison of psychological violence. So she's been suffering all her life. And then she finally got, I don't know if it was courage or help or whatever, but she got out of, of this um, violent relationship and 50 years of violence ended. And then she got sick. And she got ME. And, um, and uh, completely debilitated. She is... Um, no, I want to read some more. I want to read some more. She writes how she's... You know, she's been in this psychological violence horror prison. And then one thing that comes into her life is, is this thing. Like, where, you know, she, she... She feels an injustice, you know. Just as she got out of 50 years of violence, she uh, gets ill. And she can't do what she wants to do. Everything she does has consequences. And that's the thing about myalgic encephalomyelitis. Is if you do anything that strains you, you just get worse. Normal people, if you exercise, then you, you might be tired the day after, but you, you uh, build strength and in turn you get more energy, right? And it's quite the opposite for um, ME patients. And, um, and she describes that one word that comes again and again is limitation, that she's limited now. She was just there, free to fly like the bird, and then there is this hard wall. And she's religious too. And, and, and of course, being religious, I, I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm not religious myself, but, but I think if you are, then <laughs> you have to ask. And she indeed is asking, dear God, have I not suffered enough? I mean, is this not... You know, 50 years of mental abuse and then ME. I mean, should I not be one of those people who maybe make it out alive and get maybe six months of freedom in this life, you know? And I can understand that question very well. I think everybody can. And here's the thing, you know, and she... And that is so powerful, she... She really tries to write how, she writes how, she tries to focus on gratitude and focus on the small things. But she's constantly drawn back into this feeling of injustice. And it keeps her from, from sitting in the moment and cherishing life and cherish, cherishing this planet. She has to really force it. And so I, I understand that she's really working the muscles of gratitude, and I can't imagine what it must be like for her after so many years, you know, so many hits to the heart, you know, and then to have to try and find the gratitude and find the beautiful things, the small things to hold on to if you want to survive. I can't imagine how hard that must be. Regardless, that's what we have to try to do. And, um, and, and she writes, you know, I have frustrations, fear, things I, you know, not knowing what's going to happen. I have grief, grief, loneliness, limitations, and only very few people I have sporadic contact with, you know. I miss being close to people. I'm, I miss confidence and safety, and I miss caring, you know. Who's going to give me this? with, 
you know, when I can give them so little in return, you know. And, and she really isn't alone, you know. She, she says, we're not made to be alone. You know, how can I find peace and gratitude in that? We're not meant to be alone. How can I find peace and gratitude in that? Let's just say that again. You know, we are not meant to be alone. How can we find peace and gratitude in that? Let's focus on that, you know, just keep a little bit of a, put a pin in that. We could try and come in and use that. We are not meant to be alone, you know. And where is the gratitude and the peace in that? That's very interesting. Because it's both a question and an answer at the same time, I think. And here we come into reality that she's working with the government or the states in order to try and, and get support. And if you have a, an illness that is ill-recognized in the society you're in, then you are in for, well, frankly, you're in for abuse. You know, she writes how she has to fill out forms and do all these kinds of stuff and in the name of bureaucracy, right? So she can get support and, um, and it completely depletes her. And, you know, it's, it's, um, it, it cancels out everything that could have, you know, the slightest value in her life, right? Okay, so, so that is abuse. And let me just say right away that what's going on in governments these days and the dealing of people with ME, for instance, fibromyalgia, etc that it will be seen as how people in you know how we took women and you know because they were out dancing for too long you know and they put them in you know psychiatric wards and and under cold waters and sprayed them down and gave the you know gave, gave them electric shock and whatnot you know it's going to be seen as uh, straightjackets and that stuff is going to be seen in the same light, you know. Forcing an ME patient to do this kind of work is active abuse. And of, of course, you know, like the old nurses and doctors back in the day, they didn't know any better than, of course, people working, the governments don't know any better, the hospitals don't know any better. So we just have to educate them. But in the future, it will be seen as exactly the same, as active abuse and the theft of life. And, uh, yeah, let's just get it out there. Okay, so there is this thing, and we need to try and find the universal aspects of this whole thing. So, there is limitation. And let me just say, just to keep, you know, everyone, including myself, on track, what we'll try to do now in this idea phase for 14 days is to find the motifs, the core ideas that we build the composition on. So this is not about finding a gazillion wild things. It's about trying to identify the story on the piano and see if there is a connection to the other themes and the other stories and see if we cannot get it into this whole wheel that, that is the composition. And so that's all we want to do for now. It's going to end up in this concept for strings and organ, but, but for now it is just finding out where are these stories on the piano. So this story is complex in a way, but also it is the story of so many people suffering from chronic illness, and in particular, in particular the unrecognized ones. And I want to try and come in to the first thing she says, which is the limitation. Right, you know, because she'd been looking forward to freedom all the time. And the first thing, we just need to get started somehow. And the first thing that pops into my mind is, okay, so she's, 
she's having you know in a life of 50 years with 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 um psychological violence right and and now she's free finally you know now she's free and then she gets a physical illness right there and then that limits her maybe more than she'd ever been even though she she tells me she would prefer the ME to the psychological violence so let's take a look at the main theme you know just be a little bit more f free and come in and be a little bit more bird-like. landscape in this area of Denmark where we are currently uh, you know I can I can see this theme out there and it's definitely f freedom to me it's sunlight shining through a stupid tree and you feel alive and um, and let's try to to, to, to turn to, you know to try and, and symbolize find a symbol for the limitation. And what is the limitation in her case? If we dive, dive deeper and try to peel the onion on the limitation, well, the limitation here could be, and of course this is just subjective, I'm just guessing, that's all I'm doing. But her limitation could be obviously ambition. You know, there, there is a lot about limitation in, in, the, in her story. And and, you know, she's, she's been supercharging ambition for 50 years in a prison. And I imagine a prison. Let's just take a prison. You're in there on the prison ward and you are in for 50 years for a crime you didn't commit. Which is true in her case. And... You have ambition. And it fills you up and... And here's the thing, what keeps her now from being a dreaming and ambitious, non-limited being? We know a lot of people who are, you know, severely disabled, you know, or suffer from things that disable them severely. And... and still wouldn't feel as limited as she does, as angry as she is. So there is something there. I don't know why I got that title to Android's Dream of Electric Sheep in here, but I, that just popped in there. But maybe it has to do with the idea that the system isn't dreaming. So where she is now, she depends on the help from the government, right? The state and the society, society the, the, the generic expression of the society, you know, because obviously there is no real people there. It's a system. And so the system doesn't dream, you know. Or if it does, maybe it dreams spreadsheets. I don't know. But... There's something there. The system. And we had the pattern from the 
doctor in remorse from yesterday's live stream. The pattern. Maybe there's something there, so she's there, and now she doesn't have any relatives to help her, no one is there, the system is, is replacing all that. She doesn't have a family who can finance her living, obviously, as very few people do, but some people do. Um, so she depends on the system and, and on... Society, understanding her situation. So she's not understood because it's a, an ill recognized illness, even though there is massive research on ME. Look up ME guideline in the NICE uh, Institute, that report they did October last year. And in Denmark, for instance, they, they're just starting to, to uh, recognize that research now. And um, so she's in, in a position where her illness isn't really recognized by society. That's her feeling. And she experiences limitation. But why? Why? Well, because that great other in her life is the system. And the system doesn't dream. So it doesn't allow ambition and dream. And she literally has to exchange ambition and dream to accommodate a system. The great thing about composing music and doing this sort of thing is that we could try to stay at the universal and not try to come in with the technical solutions to things, which is an exercise I think is great in all types of situations, and definitely in politics. You know, my humble opinion. Let's investigate the universal aspects instead of trying to come up with technical things. Let's just consider truth, what we see out there, and everyone can see it, you know. So, we have this, she's, she's out, she wants to, you know, she comes out of the violence. again again I I'm thinking now the judgment right because she is feeling judged and and because she is religious she must also feel judged by God right and then you have the system effectively playing God um, well there's a lot of judgment hanging over her and we need to address that and and we're just lazy in this case and again, using Pythagoras' judgment interval, the fourth. You know, let's try that on. So, come in here. This is just me trying to play her idea, her ambition. When she got out of the violence, you know, she thought she was free, you know. Oh, remember that? There was another thing, we got that back from, from the mother uh, suffering from Meniere's, right? When she, she was dreaming of having just one day. Let's build that reference in, just one day, where she would be without this illness, able to play with her kids, go out into the world without being so nauseous she would fall over, almost. And we came into this ha harmony of balance in the octave. So we have 
have to remember maybe to come in and when we describe this lady's ambition, we come in and describe that as that harmony as well and reference the mother. So let's try and do that. There. You know, isn't the harmony sometimes silence, right? There. And everything is okay, right? And let's stop midway up to the octave now. And then let's bring in the judgment interval. of 10 from those five years were mine and again that number five seems to come back and haunt us in this composition okay so what we did here was we took the main theme is free frankly that no one thinks they're gonna experience ever in their life and yet the percentage of people suffering from chronic illnesses in Western societies it's massive and you're not seeing most of them because they are the millions missing they are not in the streets and so this harmony realizing now I can't count because this interval is not a fourth it's a major third why did I go to that believing it was a fourth and I just sucked it up no oh, it still works Imaginary fourth, which is not a fourth, but a major third. And that would be too heroic. Let's try to get some real fourths in now. something I like that so we're starting on this major 
Third. This tells you something about how theoretical I am, right? And this was the same interval that we gave the doctor when he tried to exercise his authority. And now he's a child. And we're coming there to the same thing with her, so... to venture upwards and see if she, if she could have one last sort of, you know, try one last time to look out and see the, the stuff she was meant to be out there with, the birds and the sky and eating pancakes in the sun, all the stuff she can't do now. a little bit of in the middle of the feeling of loss you know just a little reminder that even as she's sitting there in the shadow you know somewhere out there you know rays are coming through it's an important reminder because in my experience the only way to get through this to try and travel, not out of ourselves, but with ourselves, to the edge of the world, and look out into the great beyond, and see how wonderful it is that we are not, in every fraction of a second, being torn apart by all the awesome powers that are out there. And I know it's hard because we're not meant to be lonely. Where is the peace and the gratitude in that? Is it a provocation to come up with a reminder like this? Sometimes it might be, right? But maybe it's necessary, and maybe music allows us to describe it. By talking about it, I feel like I'm almost diminishing what it is, because we can tell.
little bit here. What has happened at this point is, to me now, it, it's, it's starting to become more and more like a playground, you know. As we develop the themes, of course, the motifs, in average, I think we've been doing maybe four a day. Well, then you start feeling, you start establishing these intervals and the motifs in the body, right? And, and now your intuition is starting to work more and more and more. But I still try to limit myself a little bit because you can go out, you know, too far and you have to rein it back in and stay with the story. Otherwise, you know, you have to find the limitation. You have to know your own limitation, right? And that's an active thing. Okay, so we have that. And then the harmony. And then Beethoven. And up to the fourth of the judgment. And then we wanted to come up a little bit higher and she looks out onto the great landscape where she should have been, but now she's ill physically now. And there is a realization here in that interval, right? The judgment. The judgment. We accept. And And from there, we try to play the beauty of the environment that she can no longer participate in. The stuff that she wants to do, but she can no longer do. Pancakes in the sun. Doing pearl necklaces. anymore. Because she's not free now. She has an ill-recognized illness. And now she has to deal with the system. And that system believes it knows best. Because like with the soldiers and with the doctors, when you are in a position where you decide what's up and down in other people's lives, and even if they get to live, well, you need to reduce elements of yourself. And maybe you have to learn how to stop dreaming because it's inhuman and no one should be put in that situation, not the patients, and not the people working in the institutions. They're all victims, if you ask me. All of them. Because they're people. Not androids. I'm just trying to hold back a little here before I go into a rant. about trust and people and systems. So, there was that pattern, so. What happens is she comes out of the abuse and she sees the fields and the skies and now she's free, now she's free. But then Beethoven comes in 
and judgment comes in. And there is a limitation now, and she looks out and sees her own ghost eating pancakes in the sun. And she tries to connect to the harmony, but instead of coming up on the octave, we deny her that by a half note. And now she's alone. And yet not quite. Because now there are two authorities in her life. One is her faith, and the other is the one, the one pretending to be God, right? The system. And so, we were talking about yesterday how the doctor is also na navigating those two, two worlds and trying to adhere to the principles and the rules of the institutions and putting that above the individual in a game of pretend, budgets and that sort of thing. And we have the ox, which is the genuine human experience, the person that is walking through the life and that is the only thing that is true. And that subjective experience is the only thing that is true. Welcome to argue with me in the comments. We have those two things yesterday. The universal pattern of the, the ox, the real universal experience, right? <laughs> to come in and walk in the tracks of the ox because they want to pretend the rules are universal and they are not so they try to triumph the ox by adding an extra step going that that much further and trying to be triumphant story and the system you know they have that same idea that their rules are universal too you know, otherwise they wouldn't be able to work with them the human beings involved would not be able to to do the things they do like asking a patient with me to fill in a, a questionnaire at the price of seven days of dreams and two hours of doing something remotely out of the zone of suffering. And uh, we want to introduce those things and see if we can, we can find that. So came through the birds, blah, 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 and comes in, Beethoven arrives. <laughs> there is a judgment and, and she's not allowed, uh, or she's looking out and she sees from within her house, she sees the limitation out there. And, we had the same reference, actually, back to the mother with the meniers. And she was looking out of her house when she'd been up on the wave. And, and there was that. That interval. But this time, we want to...
to be close to the judgment and then trying to sort of peer out of the judgment. I am judged now, you know, but I want to try and look out. And then she sees the stuff she's now living without, pancakes in the sun, pearl necklaces, and all the beautiful things. And she believes she's alone, but she's not alone. So right there when she's reminded that on the edge of things, rays of light, as that old Godspeed You Black Emperor album, you know. He's gone, but sometimes rays of light still grace the corners of our rooms. You know, and you get that. And she could get that. Was it not for the android who dreams of spreadsheets and doesn't dream of things in flesh and blood and moving parts in the cosmos? I want to take that. And I want the pattern to come in. And maybe it could be in the basis and the cherry. in action, you know, now she comes in and they don't mean to do any harm to anybody, you know, you just have to fill out this questionnaire, you know.
And so where can we come in and remind us a little bit again about the rules? So she was up there, you know, and feeling those rays of light, maybe they would still be out there. I might have been through 50 years of suffering. I might have been coming out on the other side and now I've fallen ill, you know. It's a shame that there statistically is no improved possibility that if your farm gets hit by a, a, a sports plane, you know, that that won't happen again. But statistically, the possibility is exactly the same. So there is unfortunately no, and it's weird for us humans to think, and it's an old, it's an old thing. It's an old religious thing that just stuck with us. We think if a plane flew into my house yesterday, then it's very unlikely that it should happen again. And from one point of view it is, but from an objective point of view it isn't. If there are any mathematicians out there who believe this is gibberish, free to comment on what I just said. But, uh, but it will be the human experience nonetheless that you look back at a life full of neglect and pain and abuse and now you come out on the other side and now it is as if the universe itself is punishing you for something or whatever it is you feel. Because illness isn't, you know, you can't point at someone and give them cancer, right? And uh, so we need to come in to the pattern again and the system that believes that its rules are universal in order for the human beings involved working there to survive mentally and with their souls, and I don't blame them. Blame them. Um, it is just resulting in abuse, for now involuntary, but nonetheless active abuse. And um, so you come in, Beethoven, the judgment, looks out and tries to take one last look at what she's missing out on yet again, you know. And we came up and now we have a new foundation. And we play the main theme, but now coming back to this root, starting a bit, a bit less higher up, you know, sort of in that interval we had there. system. You know, they don't know they're doing anything wrong. You just have to fill out these forms. We know what's best for you. I'm sending out these nurses now. These two nice nurses. Happy Mary Poppins is coming in there now. Let's let's make this thing okay, and it's not okay. And unless they're educated in an illness that you're not allowed to educate anybody in in Denmark currently, I believe, well, and it's going to result in abuse again. So imagine that. Imagine that. What is it? What is that movie? You know, maybe there isn't a movie, you know. You've been in prison for 50 years and then you run out and you think you're free only to realize that you're just in a bigger prison, part of a weird experiment. Like from Shawshank Redemption to The Truman Show. And uh, she's not alone, is she? This is millions, millions of people, this situation. And um, okay, so we came in and 
Maybe just try to do the ox, but on, on, on the six, like the doctor retaining to the rules, pretending to be universal, the same way we take this new, pretty horrific version of the main theme. Or maybe just because it sort of insists, right? that we saw in, in the horizon with the ox and the birds. Then, coming up, up here, then maybe we should have that, that, uh, some of that. You know, it's just, it's just a questionnaire that we need you to fill out. with a nice, you know, coming up. Coming up with a nice, deep melody, the dark, dark violins and, and the viola. to try must remember not to make it too sad because or too sort of rural because it's but still the system convinced they're doing the right thing it's just a questionnaire so we can do right by you
So, what can we do from here? Now, all we've done is solidify the agony, and what we've done is we've just manifested a horrible story now with, with, uh, you know, a life abuse, and it's just allowed to dream for a fraction of a second, and then we take it back into the arms of the system. And now she's not allowed to dream anymore. Because in order to dream, you have to be safe and you need to feel welcome, right? And that's one of the things it's so easy to forget. For anybody who's receiving any support from anybody without feeling they provide any value in return, will feel extremely poor about it. And in particular, if you have, you know, politicians and public figures ranting about it in TV also, right? You don't feel welcome anymore and you're pushed into the shadows. And then your doctor is not really trying to help you out and so another door is shut. And in order to get any help, you need to play by the baton of the system, right? And um, and there we have her. I'm ter- terribly sorry, you know, if you're watching this. We'll try to do better by you now. The, the thing we did was to... There's one thing here. And, and God, it's hard to do this thing without sounding preachy. Uh, but it's really, it's, a, it's survival, right? When we are in this position where, where there is injustice, you know, it is injustice. Anybody who would be in her shoes would feel deep, profound injustice. And how can we ask anybody to go out of themselves? and see the thing from the outside. And she answers that question herself, I believe. And I can answer that because I am a relative to someone who's been suffering with hardcore illness for many years, and we've gotten next to zero help from the people we thought would help us, and a ton of help from friends and strangers who came and encountered us along the way. And so I know I know this thing. I know what it feels like to be, you know, hit in your face with a bat just when you're about to start life, you know. And my partner, incredible composer and songwriter, an absolute genius, if you ask me, just, you know, got a bat to her head, you know, not literally. And she's fighting her way out of that. And so is this person, and so is everybody who send in their stories. Because that alone is an attempt to try and see if we cannot bring this up to a universal level and make this something, turn this into something that can have value in the world. And it already has. This story that I'm just reading today from this woman has given me tremendous value. In a very short amount of time, you read the story and it comes into your body and you have um, a a potential now to use that story in your works and and I can craft music from that and that is a an intense blessing to witness what happens. And it's much easier for me to do than with words, even though you, of course, find me talking all the time. Um, Please leave in the comments, scale of one to ten, how much too much you think I'm talking all the time. So, she had that question, you know. We are not meant to be alone. Where, where is the peace and the gratitude in that? We are not meant to be alone. Where is the peace and the gratitude? So. 
So. She, she just has to walk to the end of the world, the edge of the world, and look at herself in the big picture and train that journey, right? We're not meant to be alone. Where is the peace and the gratitude in that? Well, to be alone where where is the peace in that where is the gratitude Maybe that's the response, you know. We're not meant to be alone. And there is peace and gratitude in that. It is realizing what we need, even when we can't get it.
maybe, you know. Maybe it's there, I don't know. It's just a faint feeling I have. And the words are pretty insignificant. I try to describe what, what I feel. We're not meant to be alone. And there is peace and gratitude to be found in exactly that. If we see ourselves as the universal, the beauty of the need, children from day two. So, we come, I think, to the conclusion of day four and diving straight in to the week on a Monday, both guns blazing, blazing at violence and abuse no matter where it takes place and trying to keep the focus on the edge of the world to meditate on that whenever we feel the injustice and so I have the stupid drawing, of course, that resembles the composition of the idea, the wheel, the ox that is dragging it around. And, and she, where is she, you know, looking out at the injustice? She's just in the wheel, because her story is not the only story. You know. And there will in this huge wheel be these rooms, right? And there she is, looking out. And see her.
looking at the birds, looking at her ghost in the garden, and looking at the system. But here's the beautiful thing about this wheel. The things that aren't universal do not belong. So the rules and the system and the androids and all the people who suffer there too, they are real. But the system, they're just clouds and they dissipate and they don't belong in the wheel. But she does, she belongs in the wheel. That's it for now. I thank you all and I hope to see you tomorrow for the other live streams where we pick up another story. Thank you so much.